We're at the uh, park office, which I think is closed, but I need to get a map and information. For instance, here's a trail. It's a three mile loop, too long for me. Here is a map. Take a picture of it, and I think I can grab a non-colored one at the door. This is a handy one to have. The shortest one is the Nature Center Interpretive Trail, uh, 0.4 tenths of a mile. And we're at the Nature Center, I think. Down here it says uh, Path of the Earth People Trail. <laughs> and the main entrance, we came in there and drove up might be a little disappointing for us because we they're they're closed so we can't go in and ask where the bison are pets are not allowed on trails except for the path of the earth people and the path of the sky people trails look at that butterfly it's my air conditioner running but this is beautiful. Here's a trail on the other side. I don't know if this is the interpretive trail or if you find it around back. But it says bison roam freely here, so I may just get some more video and look for bison from my car. I'm gonna look again from this side. bird just flew over me. This begins the red trail. That would be the prairie. Here's the paper copy. I did see we came in this way, which was a long way from N. And I did see some things we could stop at. But here is the path of the earth people, which I think is outside of the fenced area. So the bison are in this area. That's why pets can't walk there. Um, and this is the other one, 1.75 mile loop. That's pet friendly with a connector. So we are here and I couldn't tell where that interpretive trail is. I guess it goes around back. I'm afraid we're not going to be able to see any bison. The back has a bunch of fun stuff we can read maybe back at the campsite. So we are in the protective area and we can see bison at any moment, but I don't know if we're going to be able to since we don't know where they're at. Pretty much the whole park looks like this. We didn't go very far and we're crossing over this to um, exit the fenced area. So it says to the t left is tent, camping, picnic, and hiking, and parking. Yeah, the superintendent's office is the other way. Going around a corner. Gonna go across a little creek. Okay, the entrance to the campground. Okay, this is campsite number one. It's very nice looking. Primitive, but nice. I mean Although primitive, this is uh, number two. It's really nice. Okay, number three is right there, and it's right by the creek. Number four also has a pad. Wow, I could stay here if I felt safe from bears. So picnic area, the parking is right there, right over there is a bathroom, and the picnic area is down in there. That's remote. So there's your uh, pit toilets, just not too far from the campgrounds. And this says uh, Coyote Trail.
Park. Correct. We have some of these yellow cone flowers in our yard. And the orange is the one that's good for milkweed, milkweed or um, butterflies, monarch butterflies, which I saw there at the conservation building. And we have some rolling hills going on. By fall, grasses such as big blue stem and Indian grass may reach eight feet high. And the grass along with the cone flowers. Minden Mines is the town just below us that they say that this park is in. It, but look, Kansas, Missouri line. We are almost in Kansas. And I wanted to go ahead and read this. I picked up somewhere else. Um, experience walking through prairie grasses that tower above your head. They're not quite above our head yet. With a chance to view wildlife. The park features a bison herd that roams freely throughout the park. Tall grass, prairie once covered more than a third of Missouri's landscape, and today less than 1% remains. So nearly 4,000 acres of it are right here. But um, I'm looking at this thinking if so much of Missouri, a third of Missouri was this, I can imagine this is what the uh, settlers had to walk through or the first people out here. Of course, not a road, but more like this. And especially if it got eight feet tall. This is Regal Prairie. It's a distinguished 240 acre portion of the park that was acquired with the assistance of the Nature Conservancy. And this is the Gray Feather Trail, right up from the Distinguished Prairie, 1.5 mile in length. It is beautiful. Four examples of tall grass prairie within the park. East Drywood Creek, Regal, which is where we're at, Huntka, and Zisho Prairies. Now I saw these two coming in and I think they had uh, boards to read, but I don't see a board for this one. I'm curious what the differences are. Okay, this is the Hunka Prairie. This distinguished 160 acre portion of the Prairie State Park is acquired with the assistance of the Nature Conservancy. Beautiful. Right at the beginning of the Hunka Prairie is the path of the earth people blaze in orange, a two mile loop. It is pet friendly. And there's the trail. And there's the river. See, I look at that and I can see the trail goes on and on and on. <laughs> And I think to myself, if I were walking back during the 17 or 1800s through Prairie, there's no shade of trees for a great distance. Okay, so this is bee balm. Not that he knew that. I did not. <laughs> we have it in our yard. And I love that it's a prairie flower. Take a picture. how tall everything is out there. Yes. I know the bee bomb in our yard gets tall and I have to cut it back so it's not tall. Maybe I won't do that anymore. <laughs> I don't know how to say this. To Zaisho Prairie is a third type of prairie and I don't know they all look the same to me. So I was hoping that this would talk more about the different types of prairies but it's the same one I was looking at before. So this is the um, path of the sky people, 1.75 miles. Oh, listen to the birds. There is a difference of being in the car and being out here. I 
tell you. And uh, the dogs can be on this one as well. Walk a short distance while he feeds our dogs. We have some of those. And look at the prairie grass blowing in the wind. When I think of prairie grass, that's what I think of. Here's some daisies. You know what amazes me from this short hike? How many birds I can hear, but yet I can't see them. And there are no trees for them to hide in. So I stopped and I did my Merlin uh, bird ID by sound. And it said it was a Dixisle. I've never heard of it. It looks like a pretty bird. Apparently it loves the prairie. Nothing's too tall right now. I think this is thistle. I think I found another little flower. I don't know what it is. Some sort of berry. Of course, we see these all over the state of Missouri. This thing is going to be blooming soon. That other trail, this is something different, was named Gay Feather. And I have some of that in my yard. See, we're walking through a whole area. I just can't imagine just walking straight out into that. Exploring the world. But it was never explored before. Yeah, so you took a walk. I think it's a different feeling being out there than being in the vehicle. I spy a bird on top of that spike, but I can't zoom in enough.